welcome to the AA Year of Art Play 2017. Uh, this is Anna from Anna Aspinus Designs and I'm really looking forward to starting this creative um, adventure with you. Um, the idea behind this series of videos is really to give you an inside look at my artistic process. Um, while month to month I hope to be able to show you different techniques, there's going to be a lot of repetition in the techniques um, I use. I'm very much a keep it simple and stack those simple techniques in order to yield the con uh, complex results um, that I have become known for um, in my art play. So I'm hoping that this um, series is going to inspire you, um, keep you motivated from month to month, and also um, provide you with um, just uh, an insight into um, into the art play process and this idea that um, it's not as complex as it looks. I've been teaching now for nearly two years and um, I've certainly, the contact, the one-on-one con one contact with students has certainly given me this idea that people just simply want to watch more of the process um, to see how it's done. So we're going to start um, this month with a fairly simple um, layout. Um, you will receive 12 of these over the course of the next 12 months and they'll be delivered to you um, via email. You'll get a link to download from Dropbox and with that link you'll get the MP4 video um, so that you can uh, watch it on your PC or your computer, um, you can also watch it on any of your mobile devices um, and that can be done um, by loading the mp4 file um, into YouTube, um, not YouTube, sorry, iTunes. Um, lots of different ways to, to view the content and then you'll also get the uh, digital supplies that go with each lesson. So talking about digital supplies, you can see on my screen I have um, a folder. I've got the Year of Art Play 2017 and a new folder, January. And typically when I go to create a new layout, I pre-select some photos. And this process involves basically looking through um, some photos that I have. Sometimes I come to the table um, and I want to create artistry and I'm not so bothered about creating or telling the story. I maybe tell the story. I see this as telling the story through photos. So you can see I've picked three different photos here. Um, other times I'm um, kind of taking on more of a documentation role where I come to um, the table with a story and I need to find photos to match that story. So more often than, than not though, the photos for me inspire the story. Um, and you know sometimes I will add words to my layouts and other times I'll let the photos tell the story and just kind of uh, write down the bare bones. So I kind of consider myself a bit of both, a, a digital artist and a memory keeper and so I know I have people on this course who are either or and so I'm going to try and speak um, to those two different um, students. So I will um, basically be inspired maybe by a photo that I took recently um, and if, if, if there's nothing recent then I'll just go and dip into my photo archives and I'll just start looking through photos. There's nothing more inspiring than going back a few years and, and kind of revisiting some of those memories and usually I come across a couple of different options um, and really it was this photo. I haven't actually done anything with this photo and this was one of my favorite photos of Luke last year. It was Mother's Day. He played a lacrosse game and he came off the field with a rose for his mum. So I thought it'd be pretty neat to do a layout about him, um, especially as um, my last couple of layouts have been about his sister. And so once I have a couple of photos kind of gathered together, um, I'm not quite sure how these are going to go together, um, but I'm looking at the colors in my photos and um, this one's fairly neutral, kind of black, white, you know, some fleshy tones. But looking at these two, we've got greens and we've got blues. So the next task then um, is to go and look for an art play palette that is suitable for um, 
combining with these images. So once you've kind of got your um, supplies selected, then you're going to go and open up your version of Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. I'm obviously working in Adobe Photoshop. Uh, the reason I'm working in Photoshop CC, um, PSCC or the Creative Cloud version is that that is my program of choice and it's more intuitive and because I'm going to be starting from a blank canvas um, then I didn't want to have to think too hard about um, changes of locations of tools in Photoshop Elements but if you have any questions about using Photoshop Elements um, then please let me know um, if there are techniques that are um, marked markedly different in Photoshop Elements, then I will try and uh, provide a workaround if there is one available. One of the things that um, is is just a standard with the full version of Photoshop is that um, you just cannot do everything um, in Photoshop Elements that that, that you can achieve in, in the full version of the software. So, But I'll do my best to provide workarounds and um, provide alternatives. Uh, generally people assume that because of the, of the type of art that I create that I must be doing something really complex. But um, I do generally stick to a lot of the very simple um, techniques in Photoshop. Over the last 14 years of creating digital art, I have figured out the tools that I like to use and um, I kind of stick with those. If, um, if I find something that I like, then I tend to do it again. And typically, um, there are lots of different ways that I can start out a layout. And I think I'm going to start off this series with the easiest way um, and my preferred way. And that really is to go to my digital art supplies and go into the papery folder. And I have two options with the paperies in my art play palettes. I can use one of the pre-designed artsy papers, which is my preference because this saves me a lot of time, or I can select a background and then create my, my own artsy uh, paper design. I always try and go with an artsy paper first. Cause again, for me, um, I love to play with the art, but it's also about time and getting pages done. Typically, I like to get a page done um, within about 20 to 30 minutes, and it's not always the case. And I do expect these video lessons to run a bit longer because obviously I'm talking you through, I'm working at a much slower pace than I would if I wasn't recording my action actions. And then I'm also walking you through my thought process and the reasons why I'm making the decisions that I'm doing. So you can see that I dragged those four papers into my workspace. And so I'm going to go to um, a window and arrange, and I'm going to float all of those papers in the window. And that just makes them really easy for me to kind of move around. And so one of the things I'll do is, is I'll just drag them onto my background. I will use anywhere from three to five images in a layout. Um, obviously, the easiest, easiest approach is just to blend one photo into a page, um, but sometimes it's nice to create more of a photo collage. And I think, you know, in order to be able to show you how to blend images together, it would be helpful for me to, um, to blend more than one. I typically won't blend more than three images. Quite often, if I've got more than three images, um, I will start adding frames to my page and add images in that way. I think that by the time you've got the art on the paper and then you've got the three images, it can become um, too much in order to add more of those images on there. And you want to maintain a good level of white space to design in order to keep the layout balanced. So once I have my photo then and I've applied a blending mode and I often start with the multiply blending mode because it's very forgiving. It allows some of the texture of the underlying um, of the underlying paper to show through um, but it doesn't take away all the details of the image. So I start with that. So you can see that we have uh, a bunch of different brushes, some that could be used for blending, but I'm a big fan of a particular brush and anyone who's taken my um, classes before will know this brush. And I always keep this set of brushes at the top of my palette. And this is the um, Anna Blends um, Artsy Brushes number four. So um, again, I'm really just going through and selecting different brushes. And one of the things I'm looking for when I'm 
looking for these brushes is I'm looking for a brush that has an edge. If I just create a new layer here and I stamp this brush, let's go to Edit Fill and just fill that layer with white like so and then create a new layer and stamp that brush. You can see that um, your other option obviously would be to flip it and then make sure that you have um, your foreground set to white because white reveals while black conceals and then you can kind of put that in like that and then um, don't love that particular brush so let's go and see what else we've got um, again lots of experimentation as you um, use more brushes you'll find ones that work better than others that one's not bad but not the best and it's one of the reasons I'm a big fan of um, artsy stain type brushes because they work really well and that one is quite good. So I was struggling how the line down here was acting in opposition to the lines. Um, this is a lot more organic how this kind of kind of comes in here and so it's just a question of really just blending in uh, the edges which I've done a pretty good job of. Um, I actually like to use the flow tool but you can use um, the opacity tool as well and a lot of this isn't going to a lot of the backgrounds coming through the, the page and I, I don't want you to worry about that too much because we will get to the point where we will um, go in and sort that out but yeah I just want to kind of get in those edges and you notice I'm not spending a massive amount of time on it and I'm also not getting cl too close to the edge so once we have all the details in the picture um, I probably would spend a bit more time on this. Let's go down to the bottom here and just do a bit more work on that, on the legs. And then I'm going to start painting in um, on that layer behind the photo to bring in some of those details. And you can see it's kind of got a bit of a yellow tone. And then if you zoom in like this and you need to scroll across, you can hold the space bar down. And notice when I hold the space bar down, you get the the cursor or the brush tool becomes a hand tool and this allows me to click and drag across and I can kind of just get in there and just get it as exact as I can without creating an extraction that's the name of the game here so if we zoom out the only thing I'm looking at is we've kind of lost the detail of this um, flower a little bit so I'm going to um, duplicate that layer and go back to normal and it's, there's a good chance we've actually lost um, the detail in that because we lightened it. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to create another copy of that photo, bring it up to the top, and I didn't change the size of it so we should be able to just drag that back on top. And you see now we have the detail of that um, photo back on there and it looks like we've lost that basket there too so I kind of want to bring that back in so again another good reason to go back to the originals to look for details that maybe you want in your image but haven't quite um, got in there and then we can start working on a different photo so I have this one here and so what I'm thinking here is is I'm looking at the curve of the side of his head and I'm thinking that we have a nice kind of curve and that kind of fits quite nicely in that little spot there and then apply a layer mask and so that's another way that we can kind of bring some kind of visual interest behind. I wonder what happened to the... When you add the color overlay you need to remember to apply multiply because otherwise we're going to lose our the, vi the, the ability to see that tape that I wanted to bring in across the forehead. Bring it up to the top. <laughs> That's kind of fun with the, uh, the tape there. One of the biggest challenges with creating art is to kind of know when to be done. Um, I think that that's the biggest um, the biggest challenge. See that's kind of fun to have those guys in there and that wasn't too much work. And then let's go to the elements and see what kind of elements we have. Um, in recent years I wasn't that thrilled with um, elements but um, as time has gone by um, I actually quite like the dimension that um, elements bring to uh, my pages so um, and I don't have an issue using um, 
I don't have an issue using uh, flowers with boys. In fact, he has a flower, so I kind of like the idea that this has a flower in it. It might be actually fun to bring this behind the photo. I'm just wondering though if we rasterize that layer and then go to hue and saturation. See what options we have available to us. Kind of like the red, I have to say. Can increase the levels. But the eye really does get drawn over to this side. Um, this gets lost, unfortunately. Um, but I'm wondering if we can maybe change the color of that too. Maybe bring in some of this gray. So if we go to maybe, I've got to rasterize it before we desaturate it. And then go to levels. And then I like to have some stitching on my page. So notice now how these embellishments have kind of drawn the eye over to this side of the page. Um, but it's um, it's pretty good. And then just a title here, and I think I'm going to try and squeeze a title in on this side again. The more I can get on this side, the more it's going to balance this big photo here. Um, and I think that it's kind of working. Again, we've got a visual triangle with the red, which is kind of fun. Um, it's best not to worry too much about the details. You can always go back in afterwards. Um, I can see that we're going to have an issue. And, and to be honest with you, I am not loving um, the font for this. I kind of want something a little less girly. So what I'm going to do is I am going to steal the idea of the title. So I kind of want something fun and jolly. And what I love about this new version is it kind of brings up the last um, fonts that you've been using, first of all. So you can try those out. These are all a bit girly. So I quite like this one for love this moment. I quite like this one. This one's a real super fun one. So and it's not very strong that. So let's duplicate it. And I actually thought I was going to have to um, blend that a little bit, but I actually like it the way it is. Um, so I think that I'm going to call that uh, complete um, at this point. And um, the only other thing that I would do is to add a few details. And of course, you've got all of this space down the bottom here. So what I would do is to create a new layer. And if you wanted to add some journaling, then you could create a text box here. He's looking a bit gray. I don't really want him to be that gray. So let's go to image adjustments, hue. You don't want people in your photos to look sick. And then go to colorize. And then you can increase the saturation and you can see how we can bring a bit of color in with that. We may end up having to um, change, maybe go halfway. See, see how indecisive you can be? So once, you, uh, once you've got it how you want it, then you can go ahead and go to File, Save As, Luke Lax, and then I'll go back in later and add a bit of journaling. So that brings us to the close of this session. I am going to collate all the supplies that I used to create this layout and put them in a folder and get them ready. And um, hope you enjoy the session. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, definitely participate in the Facebook group or the cluster group, whichever you prefer. Um, if you're not comfortable with either, then you can always email me at any time with any questions. And I look forward to seeing what you create um, as the month progresses. And I'll be back next month with a brand new art play. Thanks for being here and supporting my art, and I'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.